This week on Outdoors Del Marva, it's into the woods and up a tree for some early season archery action and a closer look at how some are preparing before the big moment. Plus, the eastern shore never looked so much like the old west. Get a first-hand look at the first state shooters. And a friendly fishing trip takes us to both Maryland and Virginia waters. We'll get hooked on some late summer stripers. Plus, viewer photos and your chance to win this Perception Sound 10 kayak package from Survival Products right now on Outdoors Del Marva. Hi everybody and welcome again to Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. And I'm Captain Willie Dyke. Thanks for joining us. Outdoors Del Marva is all about the people and the places that make our area an outdoor enthusiast paradise. And each week Mike and I will be taking you to new adventures from all corners of Del Marva. This week I'm going to be headed high up a tree stand while Willie will check in with you in a few minutes for a little taste of the Old West here on the Eastern Shore. See you later, Mike. Well, when you're going after big game, it can be big work, and nobody knows the importance of preparation like bow hunters. And for many, that begins by taking your best shot long before you go after a big buck. In the early archery season, many hunters prefer the early morning hours for a couple reasons. One, you can sneak into the woods before the deer start to move, and two, it's still cool enough to be comfortable. In my case, about 20 feet up a tree. All right, it's about quarter to six. We're on a farm outside of Dagsboro, Sussex County here for the early archery season in Delaware. And just down below me is my hunting partner for the day, Jimmy Colborn. I haven't hunted this farm before, but we're all set up and with plenty of time. A friend of mine came down and hunted it this week, a little bit earlier than I could. And uh, in three days, he saw about 42 deer, and three nice shooter bucks, and we're out today hoping to hoping to catch a glimpse of one of these bucks. Before long, sections of forest start to become more visible, and it's beginning to get light enough for me to put away my infrared camera in exchange for my high-definition gear. And it appears to be just in time. Jimmy perks up as we both hear a rustling of underbrush about 40 yards to our left. But as quickly as a deer hunter's heart begins to race, a trio of clumsy critters sends our expectations back down to earth. It's kind of odd seeing them raccoons early in the morning and a family of three of them walking along and the next thing you know, they heard a bunch of rack and here comes three long beards of all, of all things. It's, you know, every time, sometimes I go, I see turkeys, but just the whole flock of just nothing but long beards was pretty cool. And as we settle back into our stands and continue to wait, there's still no replacement for time in the woods. This way, or another way. Just about all year long, hunters across Del Marva can find a 3D archery shoot. Each station throughout a wooded course presents a different, realistic encounter with wildlife. I, I think it's uh, okay. I was aiming about a half inch to the left. This makes up for a few of the other shots today. This is a great way to tune up. These are all hunting situations where we set up. All the targets are set up. Uh, within 30 yards, it's all around a hunting orientation to it. On the quality deer management course set up today at Traders Bridgetown Manor in Caroline County, there's a variety of targets and obstacles in place, but a common goal to identify the ethical shot. Forming responsible habits here, then carrying them over into live hunting experiences. One thing with bow hunting is a lot different than gun. Uh, you got to be prepared and you got to practice, practice, practice. And a lot of times what I, I use here is my range finder. I'll pick three or four or five trees and spend my first 30 minutes in, in my stand, you know, ranging targets to become familiar with my area. Despite a calm wind and the presence of other wildlife here, the morning ends without spotting a single deer, let alone a racked buck. And as we climb down from our stands, we'll have to rack it up to time in the woods, the type you truly can't simulate any other way. Uh, well, for me, when it comes to hunting, and just getting in the woods offers me a piece that I just can't find anywhere else. Uh, it's quiet, it's kind of like becoming one with the environment, you know? You see things that you can't see, you know, at any other place. It's like watching the world wake up, and I really enjoy it.
Well, I have had plenty of days like that in the woods, and I'm sure it won't be the last. Still to come on Outdoors Del Marva, Captain Willie has a blast from the past. The Eastern Shore activity that looks more like the Old West. And later, don't miss your chance to win this Perception Sound 10 kayak package from Survival Products. But first. Did you know a group of raccoons is referred to as which of the following? A herd, a pack, or a nursery? The answer when we come back. Outdoors Del Marva is brought to you by Survival Products, Lewis Harbor Marina, and Delmarvelist.com. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know? A group of raccoons is referred to as which of the following? A herd, a pack, or a nursery? The answer is C. A group of raccoons is called a nursery. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. I have to say, after seeing one local group in action, the Eastern Shore never looked quite so much like the Old West. The difference is, the bad guys are only balloons. Here's a first-hand look at the first state shooters. Horseback riding is a big outdoor favorite on Del Marva, and the Western style is always popular. But some folks in Sussex County have kicked it up a notch. Lucas, you have ammo? The Leavers Arena in Greenwood is home to cowboy mounted shooting competitions. You're going to see a rider go in the ring and they're going to shoot at a course of balloons. Um, they usually shoot at one color first and then they shoot a different color to, to finish the, the course. And whoever does that the fastest and without missing a balloon, because if they miss a balloon it's five seconds added to their time, so that slows them down. And whoever gets the, the least amount of points against them and best times wins. The guns are right out of the Old West. Rico DiMattia, a Pocomo cowboy, is handy with a colt. These are 45 long colts. Uh, they're single action. You've got to cock the gun to fire the gun. A true cowboy pistol. We're shooting a modified blank. There's no wadding. There is a primer. And we're shooting about a number two cannon power powder. So we're actually shooting a burning ember out of balloon and burning a hole in it. So what is the attraction? I love being able to be a cowgirl for the day. Guns and horses, what else is there? That's the life. <laughs> okay, let's see some shooting. Keeping the balloons coming is a busy task and an energetic crew of volunteers keeps the action going by zipping in with new targets and getting back out in a hurry. The judges are keeping score, but there don't seem to be any losers here. Got them all. Stayed in the saddle. Felt good. With the sunset, horses and riders can call it a day, and all these brand new memories will start to grow into legends. Now that was some great shooting and some pretty good horsemanship too. And speaking of horses, Tenpin here is with us courtesy of Horse Lovers United Incorporated. Uh, he was rescued so he could spend the rest of his life on a farm with his companions, but he's up for adoption too. Coming up next, your chance to win this Perception Sound 10 kayak package from Survival Products. We'll show you how to enter.
Welcome back to Outdoors Delmarva, everyone. I'm Mike Parker. Right now, it's time to show you our product of the week. This is where we show you some of the coolest products out there right now designed to get you outdoors. And joining me today is Joe Pagliaro with Survival Products. How are you doing, Joe? Good, Mike. How are Survival you? Survival Products right here in Salisbury. And Joe, show us what we have here in front of us. Well, we have a 10-foot Perception Sound 10 kayak, extremely uh, stable kayak. Uh, we're looking at about a width of 30 inches, which is going to play in the stability of it. Weighs about 40 pounds, so extremely uh, light and uh, stable. Uh, first, I'd like to talk about is the actual uh, hull design of this kayak. Um, because it's got the 30 inches and it's a nice flat bottom kayak, it's going to give us excellent stability. The secondly uh, I'd like to talk about is the actual tri-keel that we have here, which is a little different than most kayaks. This tri-keel is going to uh, give us a nice steady uh, platform for entry and exit of this boat, and it also plays in the tracking of this kayak, which allows the boat to go nice and straight. Thirdly, and most importantly, is obviously going to be a nice seating system. And this kayak has it all. It's got a nice good high backrest with plenty of padding here to support the lower and upper back. And then of course you have a nice padded bottom right here. I see you have some other products here too inside the kayak and I understand they're part of a package deal here at Survival Products. Yes Mike, uh, the package deal on this particular kayak is $399.95. Um, it comes with a, a, a one size fits all APF or what we call a life jacket. Nice and breathable, nice good visible colors here. Uh, it fits anybody that's 90 pounds on up. Um, very open, so it's going to be very breathable, especially during this heat wave. And also I have um, a nice, good, lightweight aluminum paddle. Uh, the weight on this is pretty light, and it's got a nice, good curvature to the blade and also a stiff design, so this is going to give us a good entry into the water and also a clean exit as um, we lift up for our next stroke. Well, now that you've seen it, you want it, and here's your chance to win it. Willie, tell them how to enter. To enter to win this Perception Sound 10 kayak package from Survival Products, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Outdoors Del Marva, care of WBOC TV, 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. Just one postcard does it all and you're entered for this week's giveaway and you'll stay in the running to win other products featured in the future. Still to come on Outdoors Del Marva, a friendly fishing trip ends with some serious late summer stripers. We'll hop aboard the boat and later your viewer photos. But first... Did you know the male American goldfinch has a patch of black feathers on its head? The female does not. Did You Know is brought to you by Taz Marine Insurance. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. You know, one of my favorite parts about flying Chopper 16 is the chance to encounter all sorts of wildlife here on Del Marva. And believe it or not, one of the best places to see an elk is right on the beach. Just a short hop across the inlet from Ocean City, it's a different world. Assateague Island belongs to the flora and fauna that call it home. The most famous residents are the wild ponies, of course, and their hoof prints are the only marks on long stretches of this seaside wilderness. The ponies are largely indifferent to humans, but they share the island with a creature that's a little more secretive. The Sika deer is an import from Japan and Asia. They were brought to Assateague in 1920. The males are called stags and the females hinds. The adults have rows of spots on their backs that are most pronounced on their summer coats. They're more closely related to elk than our white-tailed deer, so the stag's antlers slope backwards and they have a white patch on their rump rather than a flag-type tail. Though they're smaller than white tails, they're much more vocal, using barks, bleats, and whistles to communicate. They prefer the brushy edges of marshes and swamps, so they aren't competing with native deer for habitat. Poison ivy is part of their diet, and I consider that a service to mankind. Sika are also well established in the marshy areas of Dorchester and Somerset counties. This little Asian come here has found a perfect niche for itself here on Assateague, and you can find them here year-round if you keep an eye out for that flickering little tail. 
the Sika deer hasn't just become a permanent visitor here on Delmarva, it's thriving here. Mike, back to you. Hey, thanks, Willie. You know, sometimes the best fishing trips aren't the ones that are planned way out in advance. You don't know exactly where you're going, don't know exactly when you'll be back, and definitely don't know exactly what you'll be catching. And recently, just a friendly little fishing trip of mine became one of the most memorable of the year. From the docks at Chris Field, I found myself aboard a boat owned by an old family friend. Buddy Jenkins built this boat, named the iFish, and didn't waste any time heading towards our fishing destination. We're heading to Smith Island. We're going to do a little walkabout on the island, get some crabs over there. and then go down on the flats and hopefully catch a bunch of rockfish. Anchored up off Rhodes Point, the current carries the water briskly here past the narrow flats. And bottom fishing with soft crabs, a carefully placed cast is quickly met with a bite. Good fight aside, we weren't out here for skates. But it's not long before Sherry comes up big again, and this time with a 22 and a half inch rock. Oh, he got off right there. That's good. He's not just going to catch the big fish. Hey, look at life. This is killer. And our early luck was just a primer for a killer afternoon croakers. Northern puffers. Up and crank, Jamie. And yes, more skates too. Where we're going right now, it's like hills. It's four foot of water, and then it goes up to two foot of water, and then back down. So we're going in and out of this. But finally, as we cross from the Chesapeake into the Tangier Sound in Virginia waters, the sound of rockfish pulling the drag is music to our ears. Hey. <laughs> Big old moat he's got on me. Over and over again. So a great time and thanks again to Buddy and Jane Jenkins for having me aboard the iFish. Still ahead on Outdoors Del Marva, we're gonna show off some of the viewer photos submitted by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Viewer photos are brought to you by Branchy's Gun Shop. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. Well, of all the curious creatures in the forest, one stands out as maybe the most mischievous, too. Photographer Kevin Fleming shares some of his close encounters with the fox in a segment we call Wild Del Marva. Well, I used to think foxes were challenging to get close to. Foxes are not like uh, birds or nesting birds and things like that. Uh, they tend to come to you. They will uh, be more curious about you if you're sitting there quietly, and they'll come out and look around and sniff you and get kind of close. It's nice if you can catch the good light because their, their red fur really lights up at sunrise and sunset. That's uh, two young foxes looking out from uh, their, their den. and. Uh, it's just kind of magic the way they're looking at the camera, one over each other's shoulder, and uh, just a, kind of a perfect picture. Well, that's actually the same log. And uh, I moved around to the side, and he peeked through a hole that was in the side of the log, and I was able to capture him just like that when he was looking out. So this fox is uh, probably about two months old. Not quite ready to venture out too much on their own, but uh, young enough to start seeing the world near the den. Talk about being close to a fox, here he is uh, at the end of the day, sunrise right on his face. That's uh, just a very lucky moment of a fox being comfortable with me being there and just uh, not paying any attention. You go out and shoot wildlife every day and every once in a while you get something like this that that's really stands out as being uh, better than the rest. I saw the mother coming with a starling in its mouth. It dropped the bird right next to the baby fox kit. 
and the little fox had no idea what to do with the baby, with the bird. When I saw the fox pick up the starling and it turned into the light, everything came together, pushed the button, got the picture. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Some magnificent shots. And it's time again to share some of the photos submitted by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Sponsored by our friends at Branchy's Gun Shop. Here's our first photo sent in by Bill Craddock. This monster rockfish caught on the Chesapeake Bay weighed in at 55 pounds and measured 57 inches long. Bill, make sure to let us know how you do in this coming fall rockfish season. Well, we like big fish for sure, but we also have a soft spot. Check out this baby bunny photographed by viewer Connie Urian of Dover, who got really close to this little guy. Thanks a lot for the picture. Goose hunting season is underway, and Jimmy Yingling from Rehoboth Beach seems to be doing pretty good so far. Pictured with him is Jimmy's nine-month-old lab named Wendy, who retrieved 10 out of the 12 geese that day. Thanks to Jody Yingling for sending in this great shot. And thanks to H.D. Lighty from Oak Orchard for sending in this sunrise shot from Indian River. Also encountered some wildlife out on the water. And Cindy Black from Milton sent in this picture of a bright yellow bee hanging around the flowers in her backyard. Busy as ever, as they say. Well, we love sharing all of your viewer photos, so keep them coming. You can email me at mparker at wboc.com. Make sure to include your name, where you're from, and a little bit of information about each picture. Well, Mike, another week and another round of adventures in the books. Yeah, and the best part about it, Willie, we get to do it all again next week. You bet. All right, for Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker, reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. baby. You don't have to get too close, man. <laughs> <laughs>